Hi everyone, here's a review of episode 1 of Amazon's The Rings of Power. It's pretty obvious, but this will contain spoilers, so be warned. I'll focus on a general review, but also on costumes, wherever that makes sense, and I have something to say that I haven't said yet. Episode 2 will be up in a few days, hopefully on Monday. So here we go. I'll start with a few general observations. This show is not Tolkien. Not in any way, shape, or form. And that was pretty obvious from the trailers and from everything we've seen and heard before the show was released. But yeah, the feeling is not that of Tolkien's world. Half of the characters are made up and most of the events are made up as well. Now, neglecting this fact, which we shouldn't, but for the purpose of the review, we must, there were a few good moments, but mostly I found the dialogue to be subpar, often boring or aiming for big words that just didn't make much sense. The characterization is questionable, the visuals, when they were good, were good, but they were still a bit of a hit or miss at times. My biggest problem with the show was that it never felt like it was Tolkien's world, Tolkien's Middle Earth. When I was watching the show, I forgot the sense of where I'm supposed to be, despite there being transitions where we literally see where we're going on a map. And then every now and again, I'd have that moment of, oh, right, this is supposed to be Tolkien. The Hobbit, despite its flaws, managed to bring us back to Middle-earth. And it took place in the past too, with different characters, a different storyline. So that shouldn't really be an excuse. On the other hand, this show feels like a generic fantasy that could be set anywhere. So let's start at the beginning. We all knew from the spoilers and rumors that young Galadriel would get bullied, um, so I don't have much to say here other than, yeah, it's clear why they had to put that in there. But something unexpected that stood out to me was this. Young Galadriel in the prologue is wearing basically the same dress as the older Galadriel when she's stacking up those helmets. And maybe that's just me, but it's this really overt visual cue that this is the same person, because how else would we know? We're just silly audience members. We know nothing. <laughs> it kind of bugged me that it was so overt. Uh, it gave me that sort of sense of what kind of audience they're expecting for this show. Definitely not people who know what world they're in and who know the characters in this world. Another comment in regards to style... Galadriel's brother's ears look totally normal, as in not elven, plus the short hair. How would you ever guess that he's an elf? They just look way too human, all these short hair male elves. The hair is definitely not working in their favor. There is nothing to distinguish them from men, except those kind of ugly pointy ears. There's this sense of majesticness missing. Oh, wait, yeah, I guess they spent all of that on Gil-galad who has that vibe of Discount Thranduil to me. And that's not to say that the actor did a bad job necessarily, it's just the dialogue and the character's demeanor that gave me that sort of impression. Plus, he and everyone else kind of needs to be a bit dumb and naive so that Galadriel will be able to have her I told you so, I told you that Sauron was not defeated moment. Which is sad for the canonically wise and intelligent characters. Otherwise, yeah, the ears that were on elves and were pointy uh, looked pretty bad. Just swollen and too big. Around ears especially stood out to me. So then Galadriel, the commander, goes out hunting Sauron, and she's climbing that ice wall with her fellow warriors, and that scene felt completely like Game of Thrones to me. That's all I was thinking. Also, her character is so unlikable because she is completely unreasonable. She's stubborn and narrow-minded, and I'm thinking, why is she a commander of anyone? There's this guy, one of her fellow warriors, and he's always saying, oh, we should turn back, we, should be, we shouldn't be doing this for longer than we needed, you want to do this, okay, fine, I guess, then at least let's camp here for the night, let's rest. And she just completely dismisses every single argument. No, we keep going, we're losing the light. I mean, sure, as a commander you have to have the final word, but this is not the behavior of a good leader. She just doesn't care about anyone else, she pays no attention to her fellow warriors, and that's not a hallmark of a good commander. And then they find a troll in the dungeon. No, in a cave. But I hated that scene. 
All the men, the male elves, are completely incompetent. The troll just eats them around like little ragdolls, and they scream. And then, of course, Galadriel swoops in and single-handedly saves the day. Just swoosh swoosh with her sword. Swoosh! Vroom! Whoosh! Woo! Oh! 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 And the troll is dead in no time. Completely ridiculous. So, I guess in regards to the costumes here, the way they're dressed in that snowstorm, it's metal gloves and chainmail, and this light, whatever, shawl outfit. I get that they were going for some sort of elven lightweight look, but that was really not the best approach in my opinion. You could have lightweight, but still a bit more structural, maybe? And also, think about it. If you're in this icy tundra, climbing an ice wall, do you really need all this extra fabric hanging off of you? Making it a hazard, making it more likely that you're gonna get stuck somewhere? Then, this armor for the coronation looks like something from Alice in Wonderland. It looks so flat and weird and not armor-like. I have no clue why they went with this style. The leaved crowns look Roman, but also beaten and freshly excavated, so it feels like all the styles are sort of mashed together, put into a blender, and whatever comes out, comes out. And then there was this interesting design for the, I guess, elven servants, or whatever they're supposed to be. They look like statues, and this was a design choice that I did not understand at all. Maybe for some fantasy world, but in my opinion, not for Tolkien. They just looked weird. No. Next, some of the dialogue felt kind of off and too expositional, especially with Galadriel and that icy cave just describing things as they walked around, basically. Oh, it's so evil here, our torches don't emit warmth. There was a door here, and a door there, and oh, I wonder what was the purpose of that evil that was here. She's just kind of describing as she went in this sort of train of thought, spoken out loud. Didn't work for me. I really disliked how Elrond and Galadriel talked to one another, like how they seem to be so buddy-buddy with each other, but there's actually a big age difference between them. And I think there should be that Elrond should show Galadriel more respect in some way, because there would be this hierarchy between them. And they can still be friendly with one another, but that level of respect should have been somehow better indicated. They look like their peers here. Yet the showrunners went out of their way to make Celebrimbor an older man, which he would not be, to show the age difference between characters. There are many plots. You have the Harfoots, the Southlands, Galadriel and the Elves, then you basically have Elrond kind of doing his separate thing, and actually even Theo, Bronwyn's son, doing a separate thing. And there's no real connection between most of the plots, yet at least. But for the time being, it felt too fragmented, because in The Lord of the Rings, you had people meeting one another and their storylines entwining, then they get separated and come together again, but they were all sort of on the same path towards the same goal. Here, most storylines are really completely disjointed from one another. And I'll be honest, the Southlands plot just didn't get me hooked at all. I skipped most of it. Then the Harfoots. The comedy with the Hartfords was not my cup of tea. I'm not against comedy in the context of the show or in the context of the Hartfords. I can't quite pinpoint it. It seemed like it was too much. It was oversaturated and they just looked like I I didn't I didn't think it was a very flattering depiction. And while we're here, the Hartford costumes. Really, there must have been ways to make them look nomadic or whatever proto-hobbits they were going for and still have them be more sophisticated. But honestly, I shouldn't even be discussing this because it's not Tolkien. Anyway, the design choice to have them dressed in rags with leaves in their hair, mud everywhere, eating food like they were half animals... I don't know, it just goes against Tolkien's descriptions of hobbits so much that I can't force myself to believe that these are supposed to be their ancestors. Like I said, it's such an unflattering depiction and it, it's not a book-true depiction is the biggest problem. Next, we have some very over-the-top nods to the original trilogy. He had these fireworks, for example, when the elves were celebrating, which was a clear connection to Bilbo's birthday party. 
And then there was this thing that um, Sadok says to Nori, the Harfoot, something along the lines of, oh, you're way too curious to be a Harfoot. Are you sure you're not half squirrel or something? And I just sighed because it was so clearly recycled from The Lord of the Rings. So anyway, in the end, Galadriel and her fellow warriors are all sailing to Valinor, and this great golden shiny gate of clouds opens up, and so some birds fly out, which, remember when I said that some of the visuals are a bit of a hit or a miss? This one would be a miss in my book. That just didn't look that great, which we saw in the trailer anyway, but yeah. And they sail towards the light, but at the very last minute, Galadriel changes her mind, grabs her dagger and jumps off the ship into the sea. So she's left in the middle of the ocean, the ship sails into the light and disappears, and yeah, she's just left there in the middle of nothing, just with her dagger. I was annoyed with the stupidity of this scene. First of all, because it never happened in the book, and secondly, because what is she thinking? That she's going to swim all the way back? The story has no weight because we know that she is not going to really leave, that she's going to get back somehow. But yeah, she has to have that chance meeting, as we know. And also the meteor man arrives and Nori finds him. Yay. Based on the trailers and everything I saw, I wasn't expecting this to be anything close to Tolkien, and I wasn't expecting it to be much. So based on that, I'm neither pleasantly or unpleasantly surprised at the show. Episode 2 review will be up soon. I watched it already, but I do need to get my thoughts in order. I'm not really invested at all, and it's making me sad that this show wants to be connected to Tolkien, especially now that I'm actually watching it. This really stands out even more. I have seen some pretty wild Numenorean costumes in some teasers, so I definitely want to discuss those in the future. Thank you all for watching. Please consider subscribing if you're into costume commentary and costume making. I'm currently working on the Arwen dress, on the red Arwen dress from The Lord of the Rings, so that will be coming at some point in the future. Um, but yeah, let me know your thoughts about the Rings of Power in the comments below. I would love to hear them. I'll see you soon.